Mario Kart stands tall as the undisputed king of racing games, earning its stripes as the most iconic series ever. With its winning combination of beloved characters, wild items, and exhilarating tracks, it's no wonder fans have been hooked since the SNES days and right up to the recent release of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's Booster Course Pass. This series has taken us on a wild ride, spanning every Nintendo console generation since it launched, hitting arcades, and even leaving its tire marks in real life and on our phones. The Mario Kart legacy keeps gaining momentum with each new game throwing in that extra little bit of spice. And trust me, off the back of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's success on the Nintendo Switch, its future is extremely exciting, but that's definitely a topic for another video. G'day folks, my name is Swiftjar, yeah. and for almost 30 years, we've been driving like maniacs, questioning the meaning of fairness and ending friendships in this series. So I thought why not end a few more by taking a look in the rearview mirror and trying to rank these games from worst to best in my opinion. This list will be taking into account every mainline Mario Kart game, even including Home Circuit. I've also decided to not include the arcade games as I haven't had hands-on experience with them all. But what I have played of them, I really do enjoy racing on them. And I appreciate the slightly different direction that Bandai Namco has taken that series. To best navigate the video, you can utilize the timestamps down below to skip the certain segments in the video and be sure to subscribe so you get to see my new Mario and Mario Kart videos as they go live. Let's not waste any more of your time. Let's go ahead and rank the top 10 Mario Kart installments throughout the series. With every ranking, there always has to be a last place. In the Mario Kart series case, the 10th ranked spot I've gone with is Mario Kart Home Circuit. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't dislike Mario Kart Home Circuit in the slightest. It's just not your typical Mario Kart game. It's more of a gimmick. This installment released on the Nintendo Switch, and it stands out as one of the most innovative in the entire series. It takes physical cards and manually placed checkpoints in real life to create a track. Here's the coolest part though. These camera laden cards navigate the real life track, streaming gamified footage back to the Nintendo Switch. It's actually quite remarkable and a whole lot of fun, especially if you're like me and have your Jack Russell chasing the carts throughout the entire race. I guess you could say that's an added obstacle. I am not too sure. The blend of augmented reality and physical products though is exceptionally unique, just making this installment shine. I highly recommend this game for parents with children as just think about the imaginative play that this could spark in a child's mind. I really wish this came out when I was a lot younger. Driving around my living room space from a worm's eye view while familiar Mario characters zoom by and Koopa shell fly across my room is just really different. It's straightforward and just simply fun. When it comes to gameplay though, the playable character roster is very simple. However, I do appreciate how they did incorporate unlockable costumes for both Mario and Luigi. And I also enjoyed the opponent's concept featuring Bowser Jr. and the Koopalings. I just find this installment to be really neat. Coming in hot in ninth spot, I put down the game that started it all being Super Mario Kart. This one I felt really bad about placing in ninth spot. Why? Because Super Mario Kart proves that simple fun is what it takes to birth a decade spanning franchise. No gaming franchise lasts as long as Mario Kart without its foundations being solid. At its core, Mario Kart is an arcade style battle racer with power sliding. That is it. And as it turns out, that is all its original incarnation needed back in 1992 well before my time. Compared to the now cliff jumping and underwater cruising of modern Mario Kart, the utterly flat terrain of Super Mario Kart's track is jarringly simple. This game to this day still stands the test of time and is extremely fun to race on. The racing elements of Super Mario Kart are incredibly straightforward, possibly because its development team at Nintendo spent way more time on the game's battle mode than the racing mode. Regardless of the intention behind it, Nintendo spawned a massive racing game with the runaway success of Super Mario Kart. The character roster was pretty expansive for its time, and I do love to this day that it is the only home console version of Mario Kart where you can actually play as DK Jr., with the only other installment being Mario Kart Tour on mobile. I also love the concept from this game that most tracks are separate variants. It just makes these tracks feel so much more alive rather than just being a one and done track. You simply can't hate on Super Mario Kart, as this is the game that founded the series that we all love today. Even all the items from the original are just spread throughout the series moving forward. Moving on to the 8th spot, we have a game that bears some resemblance to Super Mario Kart being Mario Kart Super Circuit. This installment holds the distinction of being the first console Mario Kart game developed by an external studio being Intelligent Systems, and it was also the first handheld Mario Kart game in the series releasing on the Game Boy Advance. Due 
Due to releasing on a much less powerful console than the Nintendo 64, certain aspects of Mario Kart Super Circuit felt like a bit of a letdown following the highs of Mario Kart 64. Upon reflection though, Mario Kart Super Circuit lacks the same nostalgia factor as the original two, and its graphics took a noticeable hit when compared to the 3D models of Mario Kart 64 at that time. Mario Kart Super Circuit simply lacks innovation following Mario Kart 64. It essentially feels like a deluxe version of Super Mario Kart for me, and it even includes all the courses from that game as well. It's hard to expect the developers to be overflowing of ideas when the technology is obviously limited compared to its previous installment. However, Mario Kart DS on the other hand proved that a handheld game despite being worse in visuals and hardware can still feel really fresh and new even when compared to the more powerful console at that time. In saying that, Super Circuit is not without its own merits. One standout feature is its multiplayer system, allowing up to four players to link up via a game link cable and only one game cartridge is needed. I seriously have some fond memories with my brother and my best mate at the time gathering around the TV when we were like seven or eight years old. It was pretty epic. To be completely honest, I actually think the colorful pixel art from the Game Boy actually stands the test of time a little bit. The visuals were definitely an improvement on Super Mario Kart and you could definitely tell they really used the hardware to the maximum with the background designs and animated sprites in the tracks. Overall, Super Circuit is a really solid game. It brings over Mario Kart 64's entire roster and even boasts some amazing tracks that have truly stood the test of time and just look even more phenomenal when they've been remade in future Mario Kart games. Next on the list is a controversial one being Mario Kart 7. This game was co-developed by Nintendo EAD and Retro Studios. This installment successfully brought the beloved series to the Nintendo 3DS handheld system and it laid the groundwork for many core cool features later refined in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and Mario Kart Tour. Mario Kart 7 introduced features such as underwater racing, hang gliding aerial sequences and stat changing customizable carts, all features that have become solidified in the series. The highly customizable carts added a new layer of competitive depth and it also enhanced the replay value of the tracks. Speaking of the tracks, it brings back retro courses like Mario Kart DS did, tricking off brands from Mario Kart Wii, and its track selection is straight up fantastic. The new addition of sectional tracks in this game was absolutely phenomenal, with Maka Woohoo and 3DS Rainbow Road being my personal favourites. This game also stands out thanks to its incredibly unique character roster, debuting weird characters like Honey Queen and Wiggler, but even weirder, Waluigi isn't here so it just goes down the ranking, that's why it's in 7. A very unique touch that I did appreciate from this version is just the simple online Go starter. These features along with successful adaption to the Nintendo 3DS make Mario Kart 7 a very notable and enjoyable addition to the series. Heck, the game is also playable in 3D as well, which was a feature I actually love for the console itself. This game might not be the most iconic Mario Kart for the entire series, but hell, it's a very good one that I love returning to thanks to the amazing lineup of tracks. Next in line, we have Mario Kart 64, a game that built upon the success of the original Super Mario Kart. This underwent a significant facelift, utilizing pre-rendered 2D sprites for characters and items while placing them on three-dimensional courses. The tracks in particular marked a massive leap forward, introducing verticality and various obstacles like Steve inclines and falling boulders. These tracks were simply now not just flat surfaces. Beyond visual and track upgrades, Mario Kart 64 refined several gameplay elements. Notably, it enhanced the skill expression in Mario Kart games by introducing backwards item holding and throwing. This just created such a more strategic use of items. They also added several new items to the series, which have become mainstays moving forward. Most notably though, Mario Kart 64 added mini turbos to drifting and even up the multiplayer to four players, just making the Mario Kart series a phenomenal party game. Don't get me wrong, each Mario Kart installment brings its own innovative elements to the table. For me though, Mario Kart 64 stands out as the most significant leap. It debuted Wario and Donkey Kong as drivers, included 16 unique racetracks and four battle courses, among so many different kinds of items. The racetracks for me have definitely stood the test of time, and in my opinion, it houses some of the best in the series. Rounding off the top 5, I present to you Mario Kart DS. This installment is widely regarded as one of the most esteemed entries in the Mario Kart franchise. This installment marked a groundbreaking moment in Mario Kart history, as players worldwide could engage in races against each other on servers with very minimal lag. 
It was very impressive for a console back in 2005, especially being a handheld and also kind of being Nintendo because they're not the best at it. Anyway, adding to its innovative multiplayer features, Mario Kart DS also introduced local area multiplayer, allowing up to eight players to join in through a single game cartridge. Other people didn't even need to own the game. They were just limited to using Shy Guy as a character though, who ironically wasn't even part of the playable lineup. Mario Kart DS stands out for its unique mission mode challenges, introducing over 50 condition-based races as part of a comprehensive single-player campaign structure. This added layer of gameplay enhances the overall experience. Additionally, this installment marked the debut of series stable items like bullet bills and blooper squids. Something that I really loved about this entry as a kid was the unique characters and cards. More specifically, I loved unlocking them. The game featured 12 playable characters with 4 unlockable. We of course had the series staples that were available in Mario Kart 64 and Super Circuit, but the others were just cool. We got Daisy, Waluigi, Drybones and Rock, who ironically has never returned. But along with that, we also got lots of carts to unlock, which was awesome as well. It just gave you something to play for. Mario Kart DS was also the first game in the series to actually utilize retro tracks. But that isn't to say that the nitro tracks in this game weren't any good. Some of my favorite tracks in the entire series are actually from Mario Kart DS, like Waluigi Pinball, Delfino Square, and Airship Fortress. This game is just an overall solid installment and just a true classic. Just narrowly missing out on the top four, I present to you Mario Kart Tour, which was developed and free to play for mobile devices. While many rankings place Mario Kart Tour in the bottom half, my personal experience playing this game and watching it evolve over four years has given me a completely different perspective. Not only was this game phenomenal, but it also played a very crucial role in the introduction of the Booster Course Pass for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. And this is thanks to the remakes of Retro Tracks, brand new Nitro Tracks, and even some new character additions to the series. Regardless of fan or critic opinions, Mario Kart Tour left a lasting impact with several significant additions such as reverse courses, trick courses, diverse items, nitro tracks, a variety of characters, character skins, me outfits, a brand new combo scoring system, three item slots, the innovative frenzy mechanic, a countless number of carts and gliders, and so much more. Putting microtransactions aside, I find this game to be absolutely phenomenal. The two week tour structure with new content drip fed over time was enough to keep me consistently engaged. Over the course of four years, this game introduced 500 plus courses, 200 plus characters, skins and me outfits, along with numerous brand new items. The in-game shop, which changes regularly, also added a very interesting dynamic and it's a very nice shake-up with the primary focus on scoring rather than just simply coming first. I strongly believe there are elements from Mario Kart Tour that could enhance future Mario Kart games, such as introducing new content regularly, having a dynamic in-game shop, some very rewarding leaderboard placements, and much more. However, it is very crucial to keep microtransactions out in the future to just maintain the integrity of the experience, which Tor did very well later on. Before we go ahead and jump into the top three, I need to give a massive shout out to First Four Figures for sending me the Mario Kart PVC exclusive statue. Seriously, if you love Mario Kart, this is a great official Nintendo collectible to add into your collection. Thanks so much to Alex and the First Four Figures team for hooking me up. And if you do want one, you can grab one in the description below. Securing the bronze medal in this ranking is none other than Mario Kart Wii, a game that likely found a place in almost everyone's collection. I don't say that lightly either. It boasted an impressive sales record of over 37 million copies, which is the second best selling Wii game and also the second best selling title in the entire Mario Kart franchise. Mario Kart Wii seems tailor made to be as innovative as the console itself. Its success was undeniably fueled by the integration of motion controls, particularly the plastic wheel developed for this game. I know people that literally wanted this game only because of the steering wheel, and to its credit, it did just add a whole new dimension to the racing experience. Beyond the motion controls though, the enduring popularity of Mario Kart Wii is rooted in the quality of its gameplay mechanics. The introduction of boosts from tricks, half pipes, and an array of shortcuts per track was nothing short of phenomenal, and these elements have established themselves as mainstays for the series moving forward. But but there is more. Mario Kart Wii features an open-ended nature in its exceptional tracks. It contains some absolute fan favorites like Coconut Mole, DK Snowboard Cross, and so many more. Even Nintendo knows that these are absolute fan favorites. I mean, they literally added eight to the Booster Course Pass, so they're definitely aware of it. The game also boasts
boasted the largest character roster seen in a Mario Kart game at that time, featuring 26 characters. And the process of unlocking some of these was so much fun. Additionally, Mario Kart Wii introduced a variety of cool carts and was the first game to bring bikes into the mix as a vehicle. This game even expanded on Mario Kart DS's multiplayer, now allowing up to 12 races per race, compared to Mario Kart DS's 8. This game is just a phenomenal Mario Kart, and I wish I could experience it for the first time again. Oh boy. The decision for the silver medal was undeniably tough, and it's somewhat surprising to even myself that I'm placing Mario Kart Double Dash in this spot. That's even despite acknowledging it as my personal favourite in the Mario Kart series. This particular Mario Kart game holds a very special place in my heart, as it defined my childhood Mario Kart experience. Right from the start, Mario Kart Double Dash brought a unique twist to the series by introducing double-seated carts. This standout feature not only refreshed the core gameplay of Mario Kart, but it also created countless hours of cherished memories. I fondly recall teaming up my childhood best friends, racing through all the tracks, and ensuring our save files are always in sync together. We went on to complete the game 100%, unlocking every character and achieving all there was to accomplish in this game. Mario Kart usually tears friendships apart, but this was an us against the world mentality, and I absolutely loved it. The double seed has not only leveled the competitive playing field, but it also introduces new layers of strategy. Considerations I did different combinations of character weights for carts just simply add to the strategic depth. Another really enjoyable mechanic is the introduction of character specific items. Choosing teams now involves weighing up character attributes and also item combinations. Using two items in game was a fantastic addition, and I love being able to swap them depending on the situation. This game's tracks also make it stronger and so much more memorable. Classics such as DK Mountain, Waluigi Stadium, and the deceptively simple yet very intense Baby Park. There weren't too many tracks in this game, but heck, they were all phenomenal for the most part and filled with so much life. I mean that literally as well, as all the tracks were connected to each other in some way, just making this Mario Kart one of the very best. This brings us to the number one spot, and of course I have the game that put my YouTube channel on the map, being the combined legacy of Mario Kart 8 and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. This game has resulted in the pinnacle of the Mario Kart franchise. Among all Mario Kart games, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe stands out with the most racetracks, an extensive roster of races, and so many different customization options for carts. The Deluxe version of this game also included the Booster Course Pass, which introduced 48 brand new tracks, 8 characters, and so much more. The innovation in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is super notable, with the introduction of the remarkable anti-gravity feature. This gameplay addition allows tracks to flip upside down, and racers can strategically bump into each other for a slight boost. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe also rectified issues with the battle mode that was found in Mario Kart 8. Instead of occurring on standard racetracks now, battles now take place in specifically designed arenas, and it works so much better. With a staggering 52 plus million copies sold, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe holds the title of the best-selling game on the Nintendo Switch. It's no wonder as well. It's released on Nintendo's best-selling home console system and got an insane DLC bundle as well. Its unparalleled content and refined polish on the series really makes Mario Kart 8 Deluxe as one of the best games in the series to date. This game has brought me so many fond memories, with my favourite being the Yoshi's Island track reveal last February. It's even brought me so many new friendships as well, which is kind of why you're listening to me right now. I just cannot wait to see Nintendo try to attempt to top this game in the next entry, and I have a lot of faith that they will, especially if they put the budget behind it. And there we have it folks, this has been my rankings of the Mario Kart games from throughout the series. If you enjoyed this video, it'd be much appreciated if you could leave a like and subscribe. Thank it honestly helps out the channel a lot. Be sure to let me know down in the comments section or in the Swift Cafe Discord what your rankings would look like. I absolutely love reading through everyone's comments and it brings me a lot of joy to see you interact with these videos. And last but certainly not least, a massive shout out goes to all of our members. I genuinely can't put into words how much it does mean to me. So thank you so much. Until next time though, take care and goodbye.